I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And in this video, we're gonna be talking to you about can my ex forgive me? It's a big topic. I'm a groveling. <laughs> please, <laughs> please. Before we continue, I did wanna say that we are available for coaching sessions. Mm -hmm. So if you would like to book a one-on-one -on -one to talk about your situation, you can do that on our website. Yep. Happy to help you guys, because breakups are so tough. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things that we have to deal with is guilt. It's a hard one. Yeah. Oh man. So I, even the greatest partners feel guilty about some things. Mm -hmm. So if even if you were a great partner, there are some things that you're beating yourself up over. But if you were not a good partner, then it's really going to be tough because some of you are in situations where you know you have mistreated your partner and they had really no choice but to leave. It's all about our relationship with ourselves and guilt is one of those things that challenges it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in certain situations where you've known that you've made some mistakes and the relationship dissolved because of it, you might be wondering, will my ex even reconsider the relationship? if they don't forgive me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you think, well, surely forgiveness must be the first step in repairing this. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we wanted to talk about. Can your ex forgive you? Is that something that's possible? We want to talk about the concept of forgiveness because there are a lot of you know, misconstrued ideas about what forgiveness is, how it should be used, what happens when someone forgives or a partner forgives. So we're mm -hmm. going to talk about some of these points and, and hopefully get you some insight so that you understand a little bit better how forgiveness works in relationships. Yeah, but first we want to talk about the mistakes. Mm -hmm. These are some of the common mistakes that we see that you're probably worried about and beating yourself up. Neglecting your partner. Mm -hmm. Now, avoidance will often neglect their partner for years. And before. sometimes they don't even know. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times they have they have been neglecting a partner for years and they know it or they don't know it. Regardless, the partner tolerates it for so long, you think they're never gonna leave. Mm -hmm. And so you're shocked when they do, because I've seen so many times the avoidant had a partner with a high interest level begging and pleading for them to change and get invested in the relationship. They finally can't take it anymore and they leave. So neglect happens often. Oh yeah, and there's many avoidants or people with more avoidant attachment styles that I talk to that they will tell me, I never knew that I was doing this. No, I just thought, well, I was busy and they couldn't handle it or you know, I just try to brush these situations off. I didn't realize how much this hurt my partner. So really be aware, really be self-reflective. If you find yourself identifying more with that avoidant attachment style, ask yourself, in what ways might have my partner felt neglected? Yep. Here's another big one. Mm -hmm. Taking your partner for granted. Mm -hmm. When you take your partner for granted and you think they're not going to leave, then you're going to start to make a lot of other mistakes. So thinking that they won't leave, that they're going to stay, is going to lead to a lot of other little things like name calling. Mm -hmm. Okay, you think, oh, well, you know, I called them a name, we got into a fight, and then four months later, you do it again. And then it keeps adding up because you think, oh, they're not going to leave. They, they've tolerated it before. Um, arguing, you assume that just because you've been arguing for a long time that they're not going to get tired of it. Mm -hmm. But the, you know, sometimes those fights and those arguments get so intense and so for, uh, severe that you're not going to forget it. And sometimes we say things in those moments that we don't really mean, but it certainly stings and they're not going to forget some of those things. Oh yeah. It's kind of like the sibling effect. 
And when you're around a sibling enough, you get comfortable with them. You yeah. know that they're going to be there forever. Maybe you're an immature kid. You start calling your siblings some names. That same dynamic happens in a relationship sometimes. You take your partner for granted. You think no matter what happens, they're still going to be there. So I can express my anger freely as it comes up. I don't have to work on how I express any of my emotions. Mm -hmm. And then later down the line, you realize, man, some of this stuff was really hurtful. Yep. Now, I couldn't just treat this person like they were always going to be there, like mm -hmm. family would you know mm -hmm. or family might in some circumstances yeah so that's a big deal mm -hmm. and with fights you're right certain things are said that are very difficult to take back now i know margaret used to say you can take back pretty much anything but the longer that you wait to take back whatever hurtful thing you said the bigger the hole gets yep so all things to consider another thing that you have to consider is if you have anxiety mm -hmm. because if you have anxiety it's probably gonna make you self-absorbed, selfish, controlling. Okay, that anxiety really makes us selfish. So the anxious people are often knocking the avoidance, but they don't really see how they fit into the equation. So if you're anxious, you really need to take a look at that because you probably were doing lots of even tiny mistakes that add up, but that controlling behavior. Uh, I had a guy today who, his partner wanted to go for a massage. And he was like, no, I want to go with you. I want to go to this massage. And the partner's like, no, I want to go to the massage by myself. And it really turned them off because, mm -hmm. and then they wanted to go out to dinner with a friend, a platonic friend, mm -hmm. got jealous, got controlling. That's that anxiety. You got to be careful of these things. Obviously there are other things like cheating mm -hmm. and lying. They often go hand in hand, mm -hmm. skipping down the street, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Together. Deception. Deception. And deception is one of those things that can take many different forms. So just be aware of that. If you're reflecting back on a relationship, oh, it was a little white lie. Oh, you know, I didn't mean it or I clarified it later. I ended up telling her the truth. You, know, you really have to consider for yourself, were there times where they felt misled? Mm -hmm. Were there times where they felt strung along? Or maybe there was very important, vital information that they needed to know that you withheld. Mm. So Big. those are all things to, to take accountability for and to note about yourself if that happened in the relationship. Yeah, so think about yourself and how many of those things you may have done in the relationship. Mm -hmm. And I wanna speak on the anxiety piece because I see that coming up a lot more often. And a lot of it is guised under almost this therapy speak that you see in the relationship. Well, all of what you're doing here is making me really anxious. So if you care about me, if you love me and you want me to feel less anxious, then you will stop doing all of those things. And I've talked with people in situations where they couldn't even say bless you if somebody of the opposite gender sneezed. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it can be taken to extremes. Mm -hmm. So while there are some things that you can request your partner to do if you're feeling anxious you know, to help you cope, you know, there there's limits and this is also very nuanced depending on the relationship, depending on your partner. You know, were you using your anxiety as a tool to manipulate and control someone else? Yep. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. And now we've all heard of that phrase, Forgive, but never forget. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness is something that is deeply personal. And if we were to ask everyone their definition of it, they probably would come up with something different. They probably would come up with some examples on their own. Yep. There's many famous quotes about forgiveness. You know, some people say that if you don't forgive, you know, it's like drinking poison. It's something that you have to carry or harbor. Mm -hmm. uh, other people think that you don't have to forgive. So there's many different views on it, and sometimes it's tied to spirituality or religion too. Some religions really do support forgiveness, and you know that's at the forefront of of many religions. Yeah. So it's it's something that you can't force. You can't force someone to forgive you. No. It just does not work that way. No. A lot of times it angers a person. A lot of times it comes off even more manipulative or entitled. So you are not entitled to anyone's forgiveness right off the bat. That is something that they have to decide on their own. That's right. And it also doesn't mean that the mistakes didn't happen. You know, so one thing that Margaret used to say is that many people try to skip anger and go straight to forgiveness. And on your end, if there's something that, that you would like to be forgiven for, you can't expect someone else to just 
bypass all of their emotions just to forgive you so that you can move past the uncomfortable feelings of accountability. Yep, and that's you being selfish mm -hmm. if you're trying to force them to forgive you. Right, your partner is gonna be naturally hesitant to move forward, they're going to be suspicious. A lot of times trust is broken where there's a case you know, that, that you're asking for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So keep all of that in mind. You know, your partner has a right to their own emotions and they don't have to forgive you. Nope, they yeah. don't. And it, sometimes it's a partial forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'll forgive this, but you know, it's, it's gonna be in their unconscious or it's stored back somewhere back mm -hmm. in the back of their mind that, you know, they're not gonna completely forget about it. Right, and it could also oscillate. There could be moments where they are feeling very forgiveful, where they're very open and accepting, and then there's moments where they might be triggered by something. There might be moments where they have, you know, a memory that pops up where they're yeah. straight back to, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> this is not working for me. It reminds me of the Chris Rock routine where she, he, she forgives the guy and he's like, did you make a left with that? <laughs> <laughs> right. I didn't get it. They're driving in the car. Uh -huh. And he's with the girlfriend that he cheated on. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he makes a left. And she's like, did you make a left with that? Oh, I see, I see. So anything he does moving forward, yeah. she's like scrutinizing. Yeah. 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 I see. Comes out of nowhere. <laughs> Margaret had a lot of really great thoughts on forgiveness, too, that I think are worth noting. By the way, we always try to be polite in the videos. Really but do. in the calls, I'll curse with people. They'll be like, you're so professional. I'll be like, you could, they'll start cursing. I'll be like, do you mind if I curse? No, I don't care. Let's curse. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> yeah. I see, I see. I get that a lot. Letting out his real colors. <laughs> yeah. So, we got Sailor Mouth Craig. You see my stand up. <laughs> Sailor Mouth <Mal> Craig. <laughs> I grew up in an Italian family. You should have heard my stepdads. Guys Every like, other word. I'm Italian. Just gonna Every slip other out. word was f this, f that. You see it here. Yeah. But Margaret had some really interesting thoughts. Some on... of you have your kids in the car. <laughs> True. That's why I had to mouth it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> she had some really great thoughts on forgiveness. Margaret had had a colorful language too, actually. Yeah, I, I love the way she talked. She had that accent too. It just made it that much better. Anyways, her thoughts on forgiveness were really interesting. She, she had said, you know, a lot of people try to skip that anger, but she talked about the importance of anger when there is a conflict. Anger is your friend. Yeah. She used yeah. to say it all the time. Anger is your friend. It helps protect you. Mm -hmm. And if you did something to hurt your ex, Anger is their friend and they should keep their anger to protect themselves from you. Right, and it's much better than them suppressing it. You know, you're allowing them to complete the cycle of their emotions and they're probably gonna have a different view on the other side of their emotions than if they try to suppress it and it just comes off as passive aggressiveness or other things happen. Mm -hmm. You know, she always used to say it comes out in weird ways when you try to hide it. So these are also some things to consider when you are asking for forgiveness or if that's yep. something that you want from your ex. Yeah. It's healthy to feel your anger. Mm -hmm. It doesn't lead to the dark side. Or maybe it does. As Emperor Palpatine would say, <laughs> feel your anger. <laughs> feel it. <laughs> right? So anger can help. It can help protect you. It can help protect them. You know, when I was going through the breakup with the Applebee's girl, Margaret kept trying for months on end to get me angry. Mm -hmm. I could not get angry. And I would tell her, I'm too sad. Mm -hmm. I'm too sad to be angry. And she kept trying and pushing and pushing and pushing. Mm -hmm. And finally I got there. But anger is actually part of the process. And it's healthy for your ex to be angry if you mistreated them, just like it's healthy for you to be angry at them for mistreating you. One thing that can be really difficult when someone is angry at you, even if it is self-protective and all of those things, it's hard to empathize. What do we say when someone's angry with us? Many of us struggle and for some of us, that's actually why we're pushing forgiveness. Well, if we get them to forgive, then they're not gonna bring it up anymore and we could just move past it and have a happy relationship. I don't have to think about this ever again. <laughs> So even in the moments where they're angry, and I would even argue especially when they're angry, is when it's vital to empathize the most. To be able to say, oof, I get it, you know? I, I definitely poked at some buttons there. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes sense. So in your own process of trying to understand what's happened and trying to take accountability, 
part of that is being able to sit with their anger towards you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And forgiveness isn't all black and white. You know, we had just touched on this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there was moments where they are more accepting. Sometimes there's moments where they're not. Uh, one thing on your end to understand is that the moment that they do forgive or start to open up that conversation is the first of many conversations. It's not just they say, I forgive you, and then that's it. We never bring it up. For many, it's I'm working towards forgiveness with you. Can we talk about what this looks like? Yeah. You know, are you able to dive into the depths of how painful this was for me, for you to understand, and so that I understand that you understand about how this issue has affected us? Yep. And I don't know if you've heard that quote. This mm -hmm. is a very important one. Apology without change is manipulation. So there has to be some level of follow through here. Good point. In fact, you know, what they'll teach you in, in school for counseling is cycles of abuse. This is something that all counselors, all therapists have to go through. And what you learn is that many abusers go through this cycle where they do apologize, you know, where they do try to take all this accountability and say all the right things. And some of them even sign up for therapy. Mm -hmm. Some of them go above and beyond, but there's no consistency. There's no follow through. And so what you're left with is the cycle of behavior that keeps repeating sometimes gets even worse. So really be self-reflected for yourself. You know? Have I apologized in the past for issues that have continued? How can I stay disciplined on the change that I want to happen in my own life? How can I allow understanding of my partner's hurt to not drive me into this hole of guilt, but rather motivate me for greater change? Yeah. And ultimately, they don't have to forgive you. Mm -hmm. Just like you don't have to forgive them. They may choose not to. Maybe it went too far. Me, I talked to a woman yesterday. Her husband was having an affair for mm -hmm. months, right? She doesn't have to forgive him if she doesn't want to. She's considering it. They tried to repair it once and she was maybe too eager to repair it. Cause you know, she, you know, you're in that state where like, oh, I have to, but then now he's saying he doesn't want to work it out again. And now I'm trying to get her to a place where she's not eager about it. Like he needs to act like an adult and step up if he wants to fix his mm -hmm. family. But she doesn't have to forgive him if she doesn't want to. Your ex doesn't have to forgive you. Maybe it was something big like cheating or abuse. Maybe it was even something small like hiding something or lying about something. But that's up to them. Everybody has their own limits and only they know what those limits may or may not be and they have their own personal deal breakers. Mm -hmm, exactly, and you don't wanna misuse someone's forgiveness. Someone's forgiveness is extremely precious. And sometimes when someone does forgive us, it gives us the impression that you know, we, we can do this. Oh, we can do this. And then they still come back and they're still going to be there. Mm -hmm. you know, so we talked about in the beginning a, a bit about taking someone for granted. We don't want to take someone's forgiveness for granted. We have to work to try to understand how we've hurt someone else to reach greater understanding of each other. So, yep. A lot to think about, mm -hmm. but keep doing the work. You have to process it. You have to heal it. You have to deal with it in a healthy adult way. And that way, if they come back and they're ready to reconsider things, you're in a much better place to handle all these difficult emotions like an adult and repair things like a healthy relationship needs to do. Right. Okay. And at a certain point, if your ex does decide to not forgive you, you have the option to forgive yourself. I know many of you are dealing with this endless amount of guilt and that's something that's not productive at a certain point. You know, yep. we've talked about this before, how guilt can be a really healthy emotion, but at a certain point, you know, it starts to become unhelpful. Yeah, so, you're punishing yourself mm -hmm. at that point. Really think about that for yourself. All right, hopefully this one's been helpful to you. And of course, if you wanna get our help personally, you can do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. I'm here whenever you'd like to chat. Just click on her name on the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.